You know how last month I said uh, the UFC is like bordering on criminal negligence when they booked the uh, Vitor Belfort John Jones fight? Well, I think with the Anderson Silva Stefan Bonner main event we have coming up tomorrow, that's probably about as close as we're going to get to seeing a uh, wrongful death suit in the UFC. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm really, really rooting for Stefan Bonner. I'm, I'm a huge Bonner mark. I love watching him fight because he doesn't believe in things like blocking or technique, and he's a very entertaining human being, and he seems like a genuinely nice guy. And I would totally flip out if he was somehow able to beat Anderson Silva, but you got to remember, Anderson Silva is Anderson Silva, and Stefan Bonner is Stefan Bonner. And uh, even, you know, the marketing department at the UFC with the commercials and the ads are just like, yeah, there's no way Stefan Bonner can win this fight, but he might. So let's watch it. So doing the whole underdog dynamic, which I'm, admittedly, I'm a sucker for that. Every time they do that, I, I get sucked in. Uh, as for the fight itself, Anderson Silva should win this fight any way he wants. He can end this fight in the first round. He can end in the second. He can end in the third. He can pretty much do whatever he wants. The problem is Stefan Bonner has a fighting style, and he's in a predicament where he really can't lose here. I mean, he really didn't deserve the shot, to be honest, and he's just out there, and if he goes out and gets flatlined, so what? doesn't matter. It's just an exhibition fight, basically. And um, what I'm worried about is we're going to have the Rocky IV scenario, where Stefan Bonner goes out there, you know, like Apollo Creed fighting Avin Drago, and he actually says, oh, this is a real fight. I'm going to make it a real fight, and tries to go do something stupid. And then uh, Silva has no choice but to just drop him. And when he does, it's going to be bad. Um, so yeah, Stefan Bonner, he's going to go in there doing his crazy man fight, and Silva, he's not going to be able to go out there and do what he did against uh, Mai and uh, uh, Thales Lites. You know, those guys, admittedly, they knew they were out of his league. They knew they couldn't defeat him. They knew they had nothing, so they tried to be strategic. You know, they played very defensively so that Silva really couldn't do much of anything. Well, Stefan Bonner is not like that. He's going to go up there swinging, and he's going to swing hard, and Silva's got to do something. And, you know, this entire thing's going to be a very great moral play with Silva. Like, do I really just drop this guy? I mean, do I have to? A guy that's an expected father. Oh, and I don't know if you noticed, but like expected fathers, like going into UFC events, have a really, really poor record. Uh, we saw what happened to Forrest Griffin against Hua. Uh, we had Mark Hominick against Hunter Unicorn against Jose Aldo last year. So, uh, you know, I really, really am rooting for Bonner, but you know, once we cut through all the the you know Disney stuff, once we realize, hey, it's the Stanley Cup Finals and not the Mighty Ducks then I think it's pretty ridiculous to, to make any pick other than Anderson Silva by, uh, well, he's either going to win by first round knockout or he's going to like toy around with him for, for three rounds. Uh, really, a flip a coin. That's the only way to decide. You don't know how Anderson Silva's going to do this, but I'm going to say he's just going to, you know, kind of play with Stefan Bonner for about three rounds and win this one by unanimous decision. And then, the Anderson Silva hate train pumps up against you know, the GSP mega fight. All right, undercard. We got Big Nog against Dave Herman. This is a fight very similar to the Bonner Silva fight because Dave Herman is just really irrelevant. I mean, he will never, ever be in consideration for a heavyweight title shot. Ever. And uh, I guess you can say something about Big Nog, but you know, he's got the, the pride legacy. He was a former interim heavyweight champion. And this is the first time we've seen him since he had his arm ripped out of the socket by Frank Mir back in December of uh, 2011. Um, uh, Big Nog's fighting in a hometown. Dave Herman's really not that good of a fighter. Uh, he's got a really long way off, but still I think Big Nog wins this one. Second round, TKO. Okay, this is my trap fighter tonight. Glover Teixeira versus Fabio Maldonado. Mal Maldonado. I'm American, I apologize. Uh, this is one of those things where, kind of like the, the Silva Bonner fight, it just seems so obvious that you kind of want to go like away from common sense just because. Um, Glover Teixeira is probably, yeah, I, I could be Texiera Teixeira, but we'll figure it out. He's probably the light heavyweight prospect the UFC has. Uh, you got John Jones as your current guy. You got a uh, Ah oh, crap, what's the name of that really giant Swedish guy? Oh, we'll come back to me. And uh, you got Glover Teixeira, and I think Teixeira, not right now, 
But I think, you know, after about two or three years, once you kind of build him up, Alexander Gustafsson, that's who I was thinking of. Well, he's not going to be John Jones. But this is going to be the guy they're going to pump up as the great Brazilian high. The guy that's going to, you know, slay John Jones. And will he do that? I, I don't know. He, he may or may not. The problem is, whenever you see guys that are that hot that come out and just, you know, waste dudes in their debut, uh, we saw that with Jimmy Hetz, a guy who went out there and just killed Nam Fan. And then in his last fight, he just looked like crap. Another guy, Stephen Thomas, uh, who went out there and just head kicked a dude to death. And then in his next fight, he just looked human. Really, really, really human. So, you know, Teixeira, he's getting, you know, elevated to the moon and back. And Fabio Maldonado is a pretty decent fighter. And it's in Brazil, and you don't know what's going to happen. And Teixeira, as good as he is, he's still unproven. So, am I going to pull for the uh, Maldonado upset? I am not, actually. I'm going to go with Glover Teixeira, and I'm going to go by second round TKO. I mean, all that, you know, to say, but I'm saying it's something to consider. You know, if you're a, if you're, if you're a bettor, you might want to take that into uh, consideration. John Fitch versus Eric Silva. Many, many moons ago, when you said John Fitch in UFC fight, you had the exact same uh, idea in mind every single time. Three rounds, unanimous decision, Fitch. Uh, but then you had that one fight uh, with uh, Johnny Hendricks last year. And uh, was it last year? I can't recall anymore. Yeah, I think it was last year where he got dropped in you know seconds. And Eric Silva is a dude who is known for dropping dudes in seconds. Um, I'm not really sure what Fitch can... Well, obviously he's a way better wrestler. And you know, if he gets a hold of Silva, this is going to be a nightmare. But I think Silva is just such a dangerous striker. He's going to come out there and just start unloading on him. And Fitch, you know, he's never really been good with uh, the striking defense, you know. Go back and watch that GSP fight, and he was just, you know, doing his best impersonation of a pinata for 25 minutes. And uh, I think Silva is going to go in there, and yeah, it's a dangerous pick, but I think he's going to win by first-round knockout. I just got a feeling. Phil Davis versus Wagner Prado. Uh, this is the rematch because in the last fight, uh, Phil Davis had to give uh, Wagner Prado the three stooges I poked to result in a no contest. Um, Phil Davis, you know, for a while there, he was considered the guy in the light heavyweight division, or at least one of the next big guys in the light heavyweight division. Uh, then he had that fight against Rashad Evans where he just looked like Dookie. Uh, Wagner Prado is a guy that is just kind of there. Um, Davis, three rounds, unanimous decision. Just got a feeling. Uh, Damian Maggi versus Rick Story. We don't have enough unanimous decisions. We never have all finishes on the UFC show, except when they have heavyweights fighting. So I'm going to go with Maggi by three round, unanimous decision. And for the undercard, we got, oh, guys I've never heard of, Ronnie Mariano Bizarro Bizira taking on Sam Cecilia. Okay, I'm going to go with Cecilia just because I like his name better. Uh, Gleason Tabot versus Francisco Trinaldo. You know, I'm going to go with Trinaldo just because, you know, it's, it's a better sounding name. Uh, and both those by unanimous decision, even though I'm a really big fan of Gleason Tabot. Diego Brandao versus Joey Gambino. What is this? Like Brazil versus Italy? Like, what the hell? Um, I'm going to go with Gambino by second round submission. Uh, he's going to make him eat his mother's pasta. Sergio Moraes versus Rene Forte, and Rene is actually Brazilian, that's kind of weird. Um, I don't know who any of these people are, so really it's a toss up. Uh, let's go with Moraes just because Sergio sounds better than Rene. I have a hard time believing anyone's going to lose a fight to a guy named Rene, so Sergio gets that one. And then we got the Facebook fights. We got Luis Kane versus Chris Kamazi. I'm going to go with Kamazi because Kane lost. He was the only Brazilian to lose at the first UFC in Brazil show. Not the first, the, the first of the modern era. The one where they had uh, Silva beating up on uh, Yushin Okami. And lastly, we have Cristiano Marcelo versus Reza Madadi. And me, I'm going to go with the Brazilians, Marcelo, by three round decision. So there you go. Those are my official picks for UFC 153. Uh, criminal intent because when it's all said and done there's probably going to be uh, a lot of legal repercussions placed on the estate of uh, the Bonner family so there you go UFC 153 keep it real